Okay, so by now we know the three very basic trig functions. Um, we know that, let's start with sine, <laughs> sine x in terms of a right triangle where we talk about the sides, sine of x equals the measurement of the opposite side over the hypotenuse, cosine of x equals the measurement of the adjacent side over the measurement of the hypotenuse, and then tangent of x equals opposite over adjacent. That's what we know so far. But there's one last thing to know about trigonometry, or at least for a geometry class, and that is that it is possible, now that we know the, these particular trig functions, it is possible to begin thinking about different ways of representing the same value using trig functions. So, and there's two main, we call these trig identities, and there's two main identities that you need to know before we finish this unit. One is that we can think of the tangent of a particular angle x to be equivalent to sine x over cosine x. That sounds a little weird, but basically this is just like the same thing as when we're talking about talking in numbers and algebra, if we were to say the fraction two thirds, it's equivalent fraction or some other equivalent fraction that has the exact same value could be four sixths. It's just two different ways to write the same value. Well, that's the same case with these trig functions. There's all kinds of different ways you can write the same value um, in terms of trig functions only. So I'm going to show you how that works. We're going to look at a right triangle. And what we're trying to do is see how tangent of x could also equal sine x over cosine x. So let's just take a right triangle. Let's take the standard right triangle that has 3, 4, and 5 for the measurements of its sides. We know that's a right triangle. We've worked with that enough to know it's an easy one to do. Um, and let's talk about what is tangent of x in this triangle. If we choose that angle, I'm just going to call it x because I wrote tangent of x. If we choose that angle, then the tangent of this angle would be equivalent to, let's see, opposite over adjacent, which is 4 thirds. But if I chose to represent this angle or find the sine of this angle, then I would find um, opposite over hypotenuse, which is 4 fifths. And if I wanted to do the cosine of that angle, I would end up with the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, which is 3 fifths. Now, what if I wrote for the measurements of this particular triangle, the measurement of sine x over cosine x, I would end up with 4 fifths over 3 fifths, right? Because that's what cosine x measures. Now, I'm going to write this out just so you can see what happens. When I write 4 fifths over 3 fifths, Oops. When you solve that algebraically, these two cancel out in the denominator, in the denominators of each uh, respective function or fraction, and you're going to end up with four thirds. If you work this out algebraically, you'll see that four fifths divided by three fifths does indeed equal four thirds. Now, the interesting thing is four thirds happens to be the exact same value as tangent of x. When we just simply took the tangent of x, we ended up with 4 thirds. But when we took sine x and divided it by cosine x, we again ended up with 4 thirds. So what we've just done is just proven that these two are equivalent to each other. All right, so we're going to try one other trig identity. And this one's basically called the Pythagorean trig identity. It's the most basic, basic identity that basically is the heart of trigonometry. And if, once you know this identity, you can begin working with, I think, what I call real trigonometry. <laughs> so we've got Pythagorean identity, which is going to be 
This is a little confusing because we're gonna be, I'm using some notation you haven't seen yet. But if I were to take the cosine or sine of x plus the cosine of x, but if I were to square each of these, and I can do that, I can do that with trig identities as well. If I were to square this sine x, whatever the value of sine x is, and then square that, and whatever the value of cosine x, and square that, it equals 1. Now, you can see from the formula, this is already looking like a Pythagorean theorem formula. Remember, the Pythagorean theorem formula is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. It looks pretty close to that same kind of formula. The only thing is we have 1 here. We don't have c squared. So we have to determine why do we have 1 there. So let's take that same basic right triangle we were just working with. Oops. Very wobbly right triangle. And let's pick this angle again. And by the way, in my last example, it doesn't matter whether I pick this angle or this angle. And then I follow through the steps like I showed you in the last uh, example. I would still end up with the same exact same numbers. And the same would go with this particular problem. I could choose this angle or this angle and follow these steps, and I'm going to end up with the same answers. So I'm going to choose this angle right here, and I'm going to take the sine of this angle first, which would be 4 over 5. And then I'm going to take the cosine of that. It's the same angle, and I'll end up with uh, adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 3 fifths. Okay, and now I'm going to start doing some number crunching. If I do 4 fifths squared, I'm now plugging in these values into this formula up here. 4 fifths for sine x, I'm going to square that, plus I'm going to substitute 3 fifths in for cosine x squared equals 1, let's see if it does equal 1. So 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, plus 3 squared is 9, and 5 squared is 25. And sure enough, if I add across here, I'll end up with 25 over 25, which does equal 1. So again, we just saw one example, one right triangle example of how the numbers work. And if you try this with different uh, measurements of other right triangles, make sure it's a right triangle though, um, then you'll always end up with one. It just always works. So this is a really nice identity to know. Right now in your geometry, you don't really have a need to use this frequently, but starting next year, you're going to use this identity very frequently. So this is supposed to be just an introduction for how it works. Um, I'm going to show you, just because I have a little bit extra time, how what I said before works, in that if I choose this angle here instead of that angle, and then follow through with my same process, I'll end up with the exact same results. I'm going to show you how that works, just to make sure you understand that. So here's my right triangle. Here's my 3, 4, 5 right triangle. And again, I want to see how sine x squared plus cosine x squared equals 1. If I plug, if I first of all figure out what sine x is, um, and I'm using this now, this angle, as my x. Um, the sine of that angle is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. So I'll get 3 fifths squared plus cosine of this angle, which is now adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, and as you see, before, when I did the problem, basically the numbers just were switched in a different order. It was 4 fifths squared plus 3 fifths squared. Now I have 3 fifths squared plus 4 fifths squared, so I'm not going to end up with a different answer. When I solve this, I'll end up with 9 20 fifths plus 16 20 fifths, which is going to get me 25 20 fifths, which is still gets me 1.